Hi guys, welcome to Caternix Corner. So I'm out in my quail room today and collecting some eggs for an order that I need to ship out. And I thought I would bring you guys along and share with you some of the criteria that I look for when I'm collecting eggs, whether it's for you know eggs that are gonna be incubated or eggs that I am boxing up and shipping out as hatching eggs. Uh, probably the number one criteria that must be met and is the most important in my book is the age of the eggs. Um, if I'm collecting eggs that I know I'm going to be putting in the incubator, I will collect and store eggs for up to seven days uh, prior to setting them in the incubator. But if I'm collecting eggs that I know I'm going to be shipping out as hatching eggs, uh, I will usually collect eggs no more than one or two days prior to shipping them. And the reason for that is, uh, for the most part, it takes on average two to three days uh, for my customers to receive their order once I've shipped it. So if I collect eggs for two days and it takes three days for the order uh, to be received by my customer, the eggs will be five days old at the time my customer receives the eggs. So that keeps them underneath that seven day mark um, when they get their eggs. Um, the next thing that I'm looking for is going to be uh, size. Uh, of the eggs. I might like to make sure that all the eggs are uniform in size. I don't want them to be, you know, abnormally small or abnormally large. I try to collect eggs that fall in the 15 to 16 gram range. Um, those are the ones I collect for uh, sending out as hatching eggs. Uh, anything 14 grams and under is, is too small and anything that is you know, 18 grams on up is gonna to be too big. And for the most part are usually double yokers. Um, next thing I look at is uniformity of the eggs. I like all the eggs to, you know, be basically same size, same shape, um, nicely, nicely patterned, even though the patterns can vary quite a bit. Um, I like to look for eggs that uh, are nice and shiny that always looks good when you open it up but even though you get eggs that may have uh, like a powdery appearance to them um, that is just the bloom on the egg and it's actually a good thing so you know collecting eggs with the powder on them or if you see an order come in and it's got a lot of powdery eggs in it don't worry about it that's just excess bloom and the bloom is what protects the eggs it stops bacterial intrusion into the egg so when I'm collecting eggs is what I use are these blue um, egg trays. They hold 90 eggs um, of the jumbo variety. Um, the nice thing about them is they're stackable. And what I do is I will use uh, either one per order or if I'm collecting multiple color varieties, I will use one tray for each color variety and then, you know, uh, make the orders after that. So what um what i'm using uh when i am collecting eggs as far as size go <clears throat> i do have an accutech um, postal scale that you know if i if i need to weigh the egg I, I can use that but for the most part i can tell just by looking at the egg making sure that uh one it's it's a nicely sized egg but two it's not excessively pointy on the pointy end of the egg um, or it's not overly rounded on both sides of the eggs to where you almost can't tell which is the rounded side. Um, I'll also look and discard eggs that are discolored. Any egg that shows no pattern or it's kind of a, a dull greenish gray color, greenish brown, uh, those eggs usually get tossed right into the manure tray and we don't use them. Uh, eggs that are undersized or oversized, uh, we usually set aside and those eggs go into the refrigerator um, or we'll hard boil them and use them for personal consumption. Um, you obviously want to check your eggs and make sure that you don't have uh, any you know, hairline fractures in the eggs or any eggs that have uh, you know, chips from you know, being pecked at. Uh, a lot of times, um, especially if you've got a lot of birds in your cages, um, the birds more or less play soccer with the eggs. They kind of kick them around. Uh, so having a good rollout tray helps on that. Uh, if your rollout tray is um, really steep, I would recommend putting some type of pattern, uh, uh, padding along the front edge. Um, that way when they roll forward, they're not gonna hit this edge and you know, potentially crack. Um, and another thing you wanna do is make sure that you're collecting eggs every day, whether, even whether you have to store them or not, because 
as eggs roll out, they're going to hit another egg, and that's another potential hairline fracture that you might overlook. So uh, as far as storing the eggs, um, I like to keep them, if I'm just storing them for shipping, I'll usually put them on a counter uh, in a room that's between 65 and 75 degrees. That seems to be you know, pretty optimal for storage. But if I'm storing eggs for like myself, for uh, incubating, I have a little dorm refrigerator that I have the temperature setting turned all the way up to its warmest setting. And I can actually put you know, this whole tray right inside the uh, refrigerator. Um, and it seems to do pretty good. Uh, I checked the temperature in there multiple times. Temperature averages about 53 to 55 degrees. And it has not seemed to affect my um, hatch rate or my fertility rate or my hatchability to the eggs doing that. And I've been doing that same uh, technique of storing my hatching eggs uh, you know, for a couple years now in that refrigerator and it works fine. Another reason you want to be kind of selective when you are selecting eggs for uh, that you're sending out as hatching eggs, you, you want eggs that are going to fit in your customer's egg trays nicely. Um, they're, they're not going to be so large that they, they fall out of the, the tray. You want the egg tray to be able to turn back and forth without the eggs falling out or rubbing up against an egg in the other, tr in a, you know, the adjoining tray. Um, if you've got some really big eggs and these look like they're probably close to 20 gram eggs, um, one of the problems you run into is these eggs are already rubbing up against each other in the tray and then when they turn, they have the potential of falling out uh, depending on how far your turner turns. Um, but these oversized eggs will also rub up against other eggs and uh, it makes it kind of difficult for, you know, people who are setting eggs. Um, I know a lot of times, like with this same rack, this is actually a jumbo size rail, so this, this fits pretty good. But uh, my standard size rail, sometimes what I have to do if I got really big eggs is I have to, I have to go use every other hole for the eggs just in order to get them all to fit. So I'm kind of wasting space in my incubator by having to do that. And I'm sure, you know, your customer would end up having to do the same thing. So as far as uh, cleaning the eggs, if you do get an egg that, you know, might have a little bit of manure spot on it or a calcium buildup. Now, even though there is a little calcium deposit on the egg, that's not, you know, it's not going to affect the hatchability of the egg. Um, but if you do want to clean an egg up, you can take an egg and uh, like wipe off any manure using like a dry paper towel or something. Just wipe it off. Uh, you do not want to wash the eggs, uh, especially if they are going out to somebody as hatching eggs or if you're going to be placing them in your incubator. Uh, if you're going to wash eggs for personal consumption, that's fine. Just go ahead and refrigerate those eggs after you've washed them. So guys, I think that's pretty much it. I just wanted to you know share with you uh, my procedure when it comes to collecting eggs, whether it's for incubating, eating, or, uh, you know, shipping out as hatching eggs, uh, just so you get a better idea of how things are done. And if you decide, you know, that you want to do that, it'll give you an idea of some of the stuff that you should look for when you are collecting your eggs. Um, I do want to say that all the eggs that we do not use, like all the undersized eggs or the oversized eggs, um, that aren't used for incubating or, um, hatching eggs being shipped out those eggs all go into our refrigerator and we use them for personal consumption you know whether it's eating them fresh or hard boiling them or pickled eggs whatever um, they do get used up so there is no waste so guys uh, i hope this helps some of you out there i do appreciate you joining me today uh, if you have any questions or comments post them in the comments section down below i try to get in there and you know answer questions as much as I can. Uh, if you're not already uh, subscribed to the channel, uh, do me a favor and hit that uh, subscribe button and also hit that notification bell. That way you'll get um, a notification every time we upload you know, fresh content to the channel. So again, thank you guys. I really appreciate it and we'll see you on the next one.